Hi everyone, I'm Benjamin Yang. Welcome back to my YouTube channel as I try to make a difference one student at a time. In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the most common questions asked by my students that covers the concept of linkage. Before we continue, could you please do me a favor and hit the like button below? And in the future to come, if you'd like me to demystify some of the biological concepts that you have, could you also please let me know in the comment section below? With that, let's jump directly into the concept of linkage. Let's start off by looking at the concept map I drew up so that you can get an overall picture of where linkage fits when it comes to inheritance. The mode of inheritance is the way that characters are inherited from the parents. And this is broadly divided into two types, Mendelian and non-Mendelian. Mendelian mode of inheritance, of course, was identified by an Austrian monk named Gregor Mendel. So you see, who says religion and science don't mix? He used peas to work on a series of pea plant fertilization experiments to observe how characters like pea color and shape are inherited. And after working on close to 28,000 pea plants and recording much, much more offsprings, following them through three generations, he began to develop a model of inheritance. So characters that obey Mendel's observations fall under this category of inheritance. However, there are some inheritance of characters that cannot be explained during Mendel's time until the advent of molecular technologies. So this group of characters are thus grouped under non-Mendelian mode of inheritance. As you can see in the concept map, there are quite a few of them. And the one we want to discuss and focus is on linkage. The concept of linkage refers to two genes being found on the same autosome. And an autosome refers to chromosome 1 to 22 in humans. As you can see in the diagram I drew, depending on what genes we are looking at, they can be next to each other on the same chromosome and we refer to them as complete linkage or they can be further apart from each other on the same chromosome and we refer to them as incomplete linkage. So why do we need to know whether the gene pairs are completely or incompletely linked? Because they will affect the outcomes. Let's explore why this is so. We start by looking at the concept of crossing over. Since we are diploid organisms, we have two copies of the same chromosome and one originating from the father's sperm and the other from the mother's egg. We call this homologous chromosomes. Our germline cells which undergo meiosis produce gametes in the testes of males and ovaries in females. The first phase of meiosis 1 is prophase where the process of crossing over occurs. This will result in a new combination of alleles, as you can see in the diagram, as a result of crossing over. Originally, this is big A and big B on one chromosome, as well as small a and small b on the other. As a result of crossing over, the new combination of alleles is now big A and small b, as well as small a and big B, where A and B are two different genes and each gene have two different alleles. Notice that the crossing over point that I drew is in the space between the two genes. An immediate question I anticipate from you is this. Can crossing over occur within a gene sequence instead of outside of it? My answer is usually no. Let me explain why. Now, using the same scenario earlier, we blow up gene A into a gene of, say, only six bases. And if you look carefully, each dash or line represents one base. If crossing over occurs within gene sequences, it must occur at the same base between the two homologous chromosomes. On the left side, let's hypothetically say the third base is the point where it is being cut and transferred. The other chromosome must likewise do the same at precisely the third base. 
Any imprecision would be devastating, creating unequal crossing overs, which can result in mutations since this gene sequences codes for something subsequently, which is why the great majority of crossing overs occur outside of the gene sequences. Next, we put the two concepts together. When it comes to complete linkage, since two genes are located on the same chromosome next to each other, there's no space between the genes to allow for crossing over. Compare this to incomplete linkage, there is distance between the two genes allowing for crossing over to occur. Since that is the case, we can say that in most circumstances of complete linkage, we treat it as though it is one gene instead. And the genetic cross occurs as though it is only involving one gene and the expected outcomes will follow single gene crosses. What about incomplete linkage then? Well, crossing over is a chance and random event. Remember, each of us will generate hundreds of thousands of gametes in our lifetime. In some of them, absolutely no crossing over occurs at all. In others, crossing over occurs resulting in both parent as well as recombinance. When I say recombinance, I'm referring to the new combination of big A and small b as well as small a and big B. Yet, in still others, crossing over may still occur, but at the side outside of the two genes. Hence, in genetic crosses due to chance and random crossing over events, we do not expect phenotypic ratios, but we will observe majority of the phenotypes to be parental and minority recombinant phenotype. And that is the concept of linkage. If you'd like to find out more about how to draw linkage genetic diagrams, I'll put a link in the video description below that will point to a pre-recorded class that you can purchase and review in your own time. Also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you'd like to see more of this kind of videos. This way, you can easily find the videos and do your last minute preparations for your exams as you step into the exam hall. And with that, you've been awesome. And I'm Benjamin Young. See you in the next episode.